Hey everyone, the Flying Holucha here, and today we're going to be unboxing a very, very special anime, a very special film that came out in the 80s called Akira, or Akira. I think it's pronounced Akira in the film. Uh, this, right on the front cover, is the main character, Kaneda. I think that's how they pronounce it in the film, because <laughs> there's two different dubs. The original dub, it's pronounced Kaneda, or Kaneda, or something like that, and you're horrible american accent <laughs> and then uh yeah in the uh redub it's uh canada i think yeah canada not canada <laughs> all right enough enough for the uh the accents uh so yeah this is the uk version we're gonna start comparing versions later in the video so if you just want me to unbox it see what's inside uh then yeah watch that bit but as soon as i start saying i'm going to compare you can turn it off if you want but if you're a true fan of this account you can watch all the way through and even leave a like <laughs> yeah okay so let's start unboxing this thing shall we first of all we have the back Okay, so, as far as I know, the US don't have a legitimate still book. I don't know why I'm talking. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that at the very, very end of the video. But, for now, I'm going to tell you what's in this box set, or this still book, which we're going to be unboxing, and what it hasn't got. So, as you can see in the front, as the collector's edition, as the Blu-ray, DVD, and 32-page booklet... The 32-page booklet is quite flimsy, but at the same time, it has a lot of information. It's not like a picture book. It's really nice. It has loads and loads of uh, what writing in it. It's really nice. But, unfortunately, there is only one dub with this. The, uh, the 2001 Pioneer dub is the only one that is included. It also includes the uh, original Japanese dub. I kept thinking to myself, because people kept telling me, but I, I think it's false. There are two Japanese dubs. The original, like, 88 dub. And then you get, like, another one, which was, like, modern era, which is, like, you know, in the 2000s or whatever. But, uh, no, it's just, just one dub, as far as I know. It's one Japanese dub. But there is two English dubs. So, the original English dub came out in 1991... Uh, called the Streamline Dub, which to me is absolute trash. Oh god, it's painful. The amount of, I've literally gone on uh, Google and typed down is the uh, English dub for Akira bad, and then it put no, it's not bad, and then in in a uh, bold letters, it's really bad. The acting is very corny, very cheesy, and it doesn't translate the Japanese version very well because there are scenes in the uh, anime if you're watching it in Japanese and then decide to watch it in the original 1991 streamlined dub after that the words don't translate very well it's just it doesn't work there's a there's a scene where I think uh Kaneda he goes into a brick wall or something uh yeah he rams his motorbike into a brick wall and he jumps off just before it crashes into the wall and explodes. But he explains why he does it. He's saying he's doing it for his friend that died, basically. Uh, if this is a spoiler, but really, you won't get attached to his character. Uh, is he on the uh, picture? No. He's he's basically wearing a very similar uh, jacket to what he's wearing, but it's got like a pill on it, just like he's got. But uh, he goes into the bar... And uh, it doesn't show him getting killed, but uh, you know this character because they go into a pub and he says, I ain't drinking your pig piss. Uh, once you see that character, you know who I'm talking about. I can't remember his name. But he dies and then uh, Kaneda gets his motorbike, rams it into a brick wall and he explains why he says it's... if it's, it's, <laughs> Sorry, let's see if we some words together. Uh if it explodes, it will go and reunite with its owner. I think that's what he meant by it. Because if it explodes, it, well, yeah, just goes to heaven or whatever. I don't know. I don't think that's it. 
I'm, I'm uh, rambling on, but that's the real reason. Whereas the streamlined dub doesn't explain that. It just says he's going to ram it into a wall, whatever. But the Pioneer and the Japanese dub does explain why he does that. But, yeah, we're going to start unboxing this now. This, like I said, only includes the original Japanese dub and the 2001 Pioneer redub with Johnny Young Bosch. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Which I really love his voice acting because he did a Lelouch from Code Geass. He does a bunch of other ones. I think he did a, a Le Portrait de Petit Cassette. He played the guy in that as well. An anime that a lot of you would never heard of. So I bought this for £22. The seller said it was mint, so I believed him. So this is the front cover, as you can see. Really nice front cover. We're gonna look at the back. It's a little tiny mark there, as you can see, but that's fine there. You know, nearly all steel books are gonna have a tiny, tiny mark, but even if you get like a really nice sparkly steel book, if you look very close with a flashlight, you'll always have a few digs or whatever. It's just the way it is. But this is the uh, most, you know, better condition than any of the other ones I saw on eBay. Because all the other ones I saw on eBay had, like, digs, scratches, big marks and dents everywhere. It wasn't really nice. Uh, okay, we're going to open this up. Uh. Okay, so we have the booklet, which we're going to go through now. Put this to the side real quick. So, so you got a lot of information in it. Very nice. We'll see the back. Very nice back as well. If I can remember, this was released in like 2011 or something, this still book. But here are the discs. Yeah, I don't want to have to do this because it takes my time, but oh well. Supposing as I'm unboxing this, I don't usually do this. Put the discs to one side. That disc over there, see this is what you get when you open it up. Get the discs back in. Very gently. I'm a sort of person that takes care, then just ram my shit in. <laughs> Don't take that out of context. Uh that that and then that will go in there. Like so. Yeah, I think I paid around £22 or something. It's £20 of like £2.50 postage, so £22.50 ain't too bad. It's really rare. CEX are selling it for £15, but... Yeah, every time you get it from CEX, it's either really damaged or... You can let, see how shiny that is. You can tell it's practically new. But uh, others are really faded. I've seen one where it's actually sort of orange, where the colours faded throughout time. It's really weird. But, uh, yeah, it's really good, really nice. So now we're going to start comparing them. So if you're just here for the unboxing, that's it, but... Now we're going to start comparing them to other releases, so I think you'll find this quite interesting. So here we go. Okay, so the first one we're going to compare is... A, it's not a still book, it's called a collector's case as far as I know. But uh, this is what it looks like on the right. On the right, it's uh, it sort of pops out, so Canada will be popping out like that. Or Canada. Uh, is a... Uh, his motorbike will be popping out as well, as you can tell. And the back of it, it will just have, like, a sticky sort of thing. Where it's, like, 
I think it's called a J card or something. I don't know. You stick it onto the back and you just peel it off. It makes marks every time you stick it on or you peel it off. And you yeah, you usually get like little dents and stuff. I prefer this really nice cardboard uh you know sleeve which we have right here to this American one where they have the back where it just you know peel it off and reveals the uh, art on the back and then they just stick it back on again. Really, this is all you need. Nice cardboard sleeve. But this version looks slightly better because just the reason it pops out and it shines as well, if you can sort of tell by the picture. But uh, as far as I know, this is the only thing the Americans have close to a steelbook. As far as I know. But uh, yeah, talking about steelbooks, let's actually go on to a steelbook. Okay, so the second one you see here is believe it or not the korean still book so there was someone on youtube i think he didn't explain it fully enough if you type down still book you'll find this like really straight away from the guy um uh, but yeah he, he didn't explain that it's not an american release because if you uh, look at the bottom if you ever have this release or you go searching it up at the bottom it says japanese english and korean language now, usually when you have an American release, it doesn't include Korean languages to it. Also, the a region code is region A, B, and C, so it's pretty much region all. So, yeah, it's not a US release, unfortunately. But it looks really nice, doesn't it? It's If you ever unbox this thing or manage to get it, which I don't think you can, I think you can only get it on, like, one website... But, uh, uh, yeah, it's really nice. Really, it's the best steelbook I've ever seen of Akira. Fortunately, yeah, you can only get it on one website. You can't get it in the UK or anywhere else apart from America and Korea. For some weird reason, it's out of stock as well. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's what it looks like. Really nice. Okay, so these are releases that... If you literally just want to watch the movie, these are the releases for you. Now, on the right, it show on the top right, it shows the English Collector's Edition. That has the Blu-ray, the DVD, and the digital. So, yeah, inside, I think it's art cards and a poster. And on the bottom right is the American, I think it's the 25th Anniversary Edition or something. Which is pretty much, they just gave it that name. But it's literally identical to the UK's Blu-ray Collector's Edition. So they both include the original 1991 Streamline dub. They both include the 2001 Pioneer Redub. And the original Japanese language. And I think it has Japanese 2.0 as well. But, uh, yeah, in the UK, you can get uh, the collector's edition for about 15 quid. I uh, don't know how much uh, the bottom right picture is in the America. Probably quite cheap as well. But, yeah, will I be getting it? Probably not. Uh, even the other release I'm about to show in a minute, uh, which I'll show in about 20 seconds, uh, which is a blur and digital uh, that one has uh, all dubs as well, but I just don't like the original 1991 Streamline dub. Oh, I can't stand it. Just Oh, it's horrible. It's just... It's like they made a joke of it, really. It's just... Or they, it's practically really the way they actually spoke. It's a horrible American accent. <laughs> just don't get into it. But, uh, yeah. It's not nice. It's kind of a horrible, lazy sort of dub. It's, don't pay much attention to it. If you watched it back in the day with the night, um, I think I googled and apparently uh, Kira was first released on VHS in 1991. I think it was only 4.8 ratio, so you're only getting after screen, and actually, some parts of the animation was actually, you know, sort of hidden. But, uh, and then again, the picture quality was crap, of course, because it's a VHS. But, uh, yeah, if you really want both dubs and you don't care about getting, you know, collector's items, this item right here, which has just come up on the screen, 
is the Blu-ray and digital, which is the other UK version, which is extremely cheap, believe it or not. You can get it for like five, six quid. It has all the dubs. It even has a digital download. So if you just want the movie and all the dubs, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the release to go for. If you want a collector's edition uh, with art cards and a poster, the one on the top right is the one for you. But if you live in America, then the one on the bottom right is for you. But if you love still books and you love booklets and you just really like a nice... I think it's sort of shiny. No, it's not. <laughs> not that shiny. But if you just really like still books like me, this release is for you. This doesn't include the original 1991 stream dub. Neither does the uh, collector's case, which I showed you very early on in this video. Uh, also, that uh, still book from Korea I don't think has the original streamline dub. So, yeah. I would not recommend... Well... I would recommend if you like really shiny steel books to get a Korean version, but yeah. Now we're going to go on to our final comparison. Okay, so what you see on the right is the 4K Ultra HD releases. Now, the UK and the American version are identical in every way. The box looks the same, the contents are the same, the discs are the same. As a booklet for both releases, they both have uh, the 4K Ultra HD disc, which had problems, and I'll get to that in a minute. They both have the Blu-ray disc, and they both have the bonus special features Blu-ray disc. So, yeah, unfortunately, like I said, there is a problem where the actual 4K Ultra HD disc didn't work. So you're buying 30 to 40 odd pounds for a 4K disc that doesn't work. Seriously, before releasing your stock, make sure it works. So, so many people that bought it are actually left out of pocket because really, they have to, uh, I think you just email the company, uh, prove that you've actually purchased it from them, and they'll send you a replacement Ultra HD disc. But a lot of people in the comment section were saying they never received their disc, so really, that's shame on Manga Entertainment, shame on Funimation or Bandai Entertainment, I think. Yeah, they're the people that released the 4K Ultra HD. But if you're planning on buying the 4K Ultra HD, just, I wouldn't recommend it because it's just had so many problems and you're going to have to try and chase them up trying to get the the new 4K Ultra HD disc, which they, they uh, promise they'll give to you, but God knows when. But yeah... So, American and English releases are pretty much the same. You can get this, like, £35 on CEX. The one in the uh, top right corner, which is a UK version. The one in the bottom right corner, US version. You're not going to get that unless you get it imported. And why would you, seeing as it's identical to the UK version? But, yeah, I've done enough talking. I really, really hope you enjoyed this review. I hope I cleared everything up. Uh, there's also a scene where... You know the scene where he goes in the bar, Tetsuro goes in the bar, and um, he says, I want a drink or something, and the guy, I don't know, he's, he gets angry or something. I can't remember, I watched this two days ago. But he gets annoyed, and so Tetsuro kills him, but it doesn't show it. It shows Tetsuro sort of getting really annoyed. His hair sort of goes up like freaking Goku, for crying out loud. This reminds me of Dragon Ball Z, this anime in ways. Even though I've never actually seen it, I've seen clips of it on YouTube. I'm not a Dragon Ball fan, and I never will be. <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah, it was the pill-popping scene or something, if I've been told. And, uh, and uh, unfortunately, people have pointed out there's a cut in it, but... I've looked in search in Thai internet and no, the the cut doesn't exist. It's just a scene where Tetsuo is about to kill him and the screen goes dark and then it shows the scene where the uh the other two gang members or the uh bikers are going down this like alleyway and they open it up to find him like dead and Tetsuo's sort of laughing on all this rubble and he's yeah, he's just sort of crouched a bit, laughing and then you're like, oh, wait, we didn't get to see him die. So, yeah, it's the guy at the bar. People say that that scene was cut. Other people say it doesn't exist. More people say it doesn't exist, and I, I believe them. 
but you'll know when you get to the scene. But hopefully, like I said, you enjoyed this review. The Flying Halucha is your bye-bye.